A very good morning everyone. Here I am Dr. Nainan going to present about the papilledema in an end and unevenly COVID-19 connections. There are no financial interest and conflict of the interest. And coming to my introduction, as we all know that the idiopathic intracranial hypertension is a rare disorder characterized by increased intracranial pressure in an unknown cause. And several neurological manifestations have associated with SARS-CoV-19 infection have been described since the beginning of the pandemic. So in the cohort study of hospitalized severe COVID-19 patients, most of the neurological complaints has occurred in 45.5% of infection individuals. However, there is a still controversy surrounding the diagnostic criteria of idiopathic intracranial hypertension. So our main aim to uh, evaluate the causes of papilledema in the end age group following COVID-19 infection or COVID-19 vaccination at Jimsa Teaching Hospital, Vishakhapatnam. So coming to our methodology, we have done the cross-sectional case series in 84 end patients are screened who came to the Department of Ophthalmology in the Jimsa from September 2022 to and May 2023. So here the patients were evaluated on the clinical judgment and the modified Danish criteria. So coming to our method, we have already assisted the comprehensive assessment including ocular examination, visual field testing and brain imaging which are were performed in the diagnosis of papilledema. And the, where the papilledema has diagnosed, we have treated with the symptomatic treatment by neurologists like Estrazolamide, Ivimanitol, and anticoagulants, etc. So in our inclusion criteria, we have included the patients above 15 years of age and uh, the patients with the history of COVID and post-COVID and post-COVID immunization within six months who develop the symptoms and the patients who are under steroids during the COVID infection. So exclusion criteria, we have excluded 15 years, less than 15 years patients and the patients who had already history of coagulopathies, abnormal prothrombin factors and neurological diseases were excluded and the patients who are recovered above the six months from COVID and the post-COVID immunization beyond the six months were excluded. So coming to our results, here out of 84 patients who we have screened, there are 18 patients have diagnosed as papilledema with the history of COVID-19 infection or vaccination. Out of 18 patients, 12 were female and 6 were male. In that most of the patients are, have normal body weight where 3 are obese, mostly are female and the mean age is 22.5 years and the 5 patients have history of oral contraceptive use and there is no history of steroid intake. So the funders generally relieve the bilateral papilledema of various grades. This is the picture of one of the patient of 22, 26 years female. Shows the bilateral papilledema of post-COVID infection showing the uh, uh, elevated disc edema with an hemorrhage. And after his 4 to 6 weeks of the treatment follow-up, there is a result of a symptomatic relief and regression of papilledema in those patients. So distribution of uh, COVID-19 uh, causes of papilledema, we have seen out of 18 patients, idiopathic intracranial pressure uh, hypertension has seen in 11 patients and cerebral venous sinus thrombosis seen in 4 patients and in meningitis are 3 patients. So this is an MRI scan with P1 which shows the subarachnoid space of optic nerve sheet with optic nerve sheet tortuosity. And uh, in our study coming to the discussion, so we have uh, diagnosed idiopathic intracranial pressure in 11 patients. So the main hypothesis here, it may be the increased intracranial venous pressure or venous outflow abnormalities, alternation in any absorption and production of CSF or there may be intracranial vascular clotting. So according to in this study, so we have got the CVST in four patients. It may be due to associated with any coagulation dysfunction. The main pathognomic mechanisms can be endothelial dysfunction with increased level of von Willebrand factor 
and systemic inflammation a broad or adaptability state. So reports have estimated that cavernous uh, venous sinus thrombosis at brilliance is higher in patients with COVID-19 with rates reaching of 0.02% to 1% in hospitalized COVID-19 patients. So finally, the take-home message and the conclusion, the upsurge of IIH may attribute suggest a potential association between IIH and factors associated to the pandemic, and the COVID-19 infection has been associated with various coagulable disorders, including CSVT, and further studies of etiopathogenesis in the age group are to be considered. Therefore, it's advisable to consult the last medical literature and studies for the most up-to-date information of the connection between the IIH and COVID-19. Here are the main references. Thank you. What was the screening criteria? Sir, so we have taken mostly the engaged group. And so what was, like you said, symptoms? So what does that mean? Symptoms, who were the screen? generally the patients who came to the OPD with the mainly burying of vision. There is a defective vision associated with the vomiting. So blurring of and vision, the vomiting was the criteria for yes. screening. So all those patients who had blurring and vomiting were screened after the And the history vomiting. of uh, COVID. This was the how do you correlate like this is the IIH idiopathic hypertension with the COVID? How can you pinpoint that? Why, why is it not that it is IIH alone they are presented in that period uh, versus the vaccine related? So how many of these patients who so are... Today we have screened totally engaged group mostly or 84 patients we have screened. Out of that we have got only the 18 patients. In that only we have won that and most of them are IIH. Okay, in that, generally, if there is any intracranial pressure increased, it may be due to the usage of the steroids or due what to I the mean any to kind say of is If you have compared your data with pre-COVID, pre-COVID, if you had during that period screening those many patients, if there is an inc increased incidence in the same sample, same race, same people, it will have given a better information. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, it's good data. What is the control group, actually? Okay. What is the control group in your studies? means you should have seen the same OPD population simultaneously presenting Seven. without COVID uh, positive. Without COVID. That could have been a better test. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.